My name is Jack, welcome back to my Ray builds and if you want to see the actual hardware I'm using then up on the right hand top corner where the eye is, click on that and you can see the, uh, the video for that one. So this is where we're going to start from the very basic of actually in preparing your USB uh, flash storage drive to boot Unraid and as simple as, simple as that. So plug your stick in, rename the stick so it says Unraid and then what you need to do is download the latest version of their website 6.3.2 from, from this video I'm doing um, once it's downloaded unzip the file so you've got your files here and what you need to do is copy those files onto your memory stick key that, like we've already done here once that's done the next thing you need to do once you've copied that is before you um, take the memory stick key out so if you're running Linux double click on make bootable Linux if you're on Mac double click on that then you'll need to um, open the security login and it'll create the disk for you if you're on a PC then you need to make bootable um, on that from the PC and that basically what that will do run scripts that will actually turn your stick into a bootable um, drive itself once that's done then all we need to do next is then take that out and put that in your PC that you want to put Unraid on as simple as that and we'll go through the next process of showing how to do that. I'm in the middle of purchasing mine. I think it's a fantastic product. And um, again, the pricing is fantastic. It's not, it it's, won't break anybody's bank. And for a small business, it's perfect uh, on that side. Um, so if you've um, got less than six hard drives in your machine, then you're looking at the basic. If you've got more than 12 hard, you've got up to 12 hard drives or less, then again, you're looking at the plus. And if you want to put more than 12 hard drives in your, in your machine, then you're looking for the pro version. I'm actually in the middle of these two here. Because at the moment my system has um, about four hard drives in there, but now I'm going to put another three in, so I'll probably be looking at buying the plus version myself. Unray is superb. It's a VMware solution. It's a, a NAS uh, box for your network. And again, Unraid will work because it's very much built around the, the Linux Red Hat version of Linux. It can run on any hardware and it runs straight from the memory stick so it doesn't physically need to sit on the hardware itself, giving you full potential of the, hard, of the hardware itself to support Unraid, which is really cool. So if you've got a really nice powerful system like I have, then you can create some VMware so you can actually have a gaming machine as well as a NAS box on your network, or you can run a server operating system inside using the NAS as a shared area for your users um, or, if you, or if you just literally want a, a dedicated NAS server then you can just literally run NAS and Unraid as is it straight out of the box and now let's get on and show you how we actually set that up so now we've got your memory stick so you need to take it out place that into your PC go into your PC BIOS and make sure every I can't tell you exactly how to do it because every, every BIOS and every motherboard make could be slightly different to each other but you, what you need to do is make sure that you, the the flash drive is going to be your bootable drive itself. Um, if you've got uh, um, RAID cards in there, make sure all your drives are set to non-RAID. So don't actually create a RAID volume uh, on your RAID cards. Just literally install the drives, leave the RAID as is standard. So every disk is seen as a single disk. That's what you need to do on Unraid. Uh, make sure the BIOS boots from the memory stick as the primary. And if you have the option to disable the array cards as bootable devices, disable them. That's all you need to do. Make sure your processor is set to uh, virtualization, uh, which is a good good thing. And then you're set to go. Save that and then boot to your memory stick. Um, and it's as easy as that. So let's get on to the next part. Now when you boot off the USB key, it'll go through its normal installation. It's very quick because it's a very quick install. And then you presented a password box. Now. What we want to do is then get your local PC or laptop, put it onto the same network as your um, the Unraid server, and bring up a web browser, and then type in the, in the URL box at the top here the actual server name, which is all default. It's called Tower, and there we go. So that's the tab Tower. It comes up this box here. On your version, the, the your drives will be um, unmounted, which will show you how to mount the drives anyway. Um, very shortly, um, you'll 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 get a screen looking a bit different to this. But the main thing we need to to go, go straight to go to settings first, because also it uses um, a DHCP address of your router, and we want to uh, be able to set uh, an actual IP address that stays the same all the time. So to do that, we need to turn off two things. We need to turn off the VMware Manager. We need to make sure that it's on No, and we also need to make sure the Docker 
is also set on to no otherwise you won't be able to change your network settings so underneath here we've got multiple network cards if you've got more than one network card here what Unray does as standard is puts them straight into a bonding bonds them all together so they all act as like one network card so in my case I've got one two three four five network cards it's all bonding um, so the server has been set to um, the bonding mode to 802.3 AD which basically means it will use all active cards so I, it gives me with all those five um, gigabit cards in there it gives me like five gigabits of backbone to your switch so if you've got two cards it'll give you two, two gigabits making it much more quicker for saving files to that so it's definitely worth bonding the cards up so stick it in that mode there that works pretty well other modes which normally um, defaults to is balance where it will use one card and use the other cards as like a load balancing um, technique um, so if one network card fails or the cable gets unplugged it will load balance onto the other cables but in the um, bonding mode 802.3 uses all the cards at the same time even if you do disconnect it it's still current working so it acts as a um, um, an active balance as well so underneath here you just leave all these as standard the only one you want to sign is take off auto put onto static and then set a static IP address that doesn't conflict with any other IP address on your network and then that be its permanent IP address um, gateway um, which also your router's gateway and DNS which will be pointing at your DNS or your router DNS um, I'm going to add in a, a third DNS here um, which will be pointing to Google servers click OK click apply wait for it to um, reset the screen in two secs refreshing a minute there you go and it's now set then we go back to tools sorry go back to settings we can switch back on VM manager click yes click OK and we go back to docker and we turn the docker back on And job done so that's the network card set up with its own IP address so then your new IP address will show up the top here you can change the server name again on the, uh, underneath that if you wanted to and you can change the description of the server but I'm gonna leave that as is at the moment so and then the other thing you need to do is now set up the hard drives because we already pre-configured this one I'm just gonna go on to another one that I haven't configured yet so we can show you what you're presented with um, uh, and it's um, I've, got, I've got two setting up here on the same network so underneath this one here so when you lo first log in you'll get this so you will get a button somewhere mine's gone through I made a mistake on it but there's a button and you click on it and, it, and you put your email address in it it'll send you uh, a trial key which and then you can put into this uh, key file URL you can't paste it into there install and it gives you 30 day trial period same as this my first server sitting on 26 days remaining and then you can try it for 30 days basically so under the dashboards this is the main dashboard itself showing that these are unassigned drives which you should have something to similar whether you've got like more disks in there you'll, you'll then have more blue ones along here gives you the temperature of the drives uh, in the box so make sure you've got good sort of um, fans going on there to keep the drives nice and cool and the bottom here gives you ideas like how much RAM is installed in your machine and obviously gives you the status and status of your card so at the moment this one's only got one Ethernet connected and the other cables haven't been connected yet now if we now go on to the main this is where you'll set up your RAID so on my first um, basically if you've got it's always worth having SSD drives in there this has got two 512 gigabyte SSD drives and I've, I'm going to set these up as my cache drives so you just click on the Dropbox and you just select them like that quite nice and easy and and then the drives are selected so that so what cache mode does is when you you can say if you should create a shared folder you can actually say to share your folder to use the cache drive so it keeps nice and things speed you know what SSD drives are like they're faster than serial ATA drives and then after 24 hours or you can probably change those settings you can say anything's been on there for a while move it straight onto the RAID drive afterwards and that, that creates like a caching process makes it really fast to access files it's actually common files you're using all the time now 
on your RAID system here, you should see all your drives as separate drives. So select the drives that you want to use. Like in this case, I've selected in this format. So I've got one drive. It's going to be my parity drive, and this drive is important because it's going to be the one to be able to rescue the other drives if they crash or something happens to them. Um, you've got to have minimum three discs to start this with. And then when you decide you want to add another drive in there, then it will be appear underneath as unassigned. You just assign it as you go along, and it builds the volume up really nice, easy. Once you've done that, you've got them in the right folders, you've got the right drive set up. You can have two parity drives if you wanted to, but for a small system like this, one's enough. And if you go for larger volumes, so you have more than like uh, more than five discs, I would assign a second parity disc just in case itself. But for the moment, we've got two SSD drives as cache three drives as our RAID. Then you just click start and it will start building the RAID disk up. Once that takes a look, can take several hours to build up, once it's finished it will look something similar to this. It will give you a total volume size here. So in my volume size uh, 6.6 .6 terabytes of storage. And on the cache drives it shows you, it only shows you one drive because the second cache drive is literally caching the first. So it sort of balances it out. Um, so it gives you like used and free disks. And on the cache drives, it sets up basic shares to start with, which is the apps data, the domains, the iOS, which holds the disk images for VM, and the system, which stores on the cache drive. Now I've created an archive folder on here, which points to the actual RAID disk itself, which is the large volume. That's what you'll do with like working data, things like that. You'll store it on there. Um, so that's how you basically set the main drives up. That gets your system up and running. And if you now click on, if you go to um, start and run, and do backslash backslash tower, and click OK, you should now see the vo the, the drives that actually that's your flash drive, uh, which you boot from. Don't need to save anything to that, so it'd be probably worth hiding that off the network. Which I'll show you more details on folders folders and stuff. That's the archive um, drive we've, we've made to store our data. And we've got a software directory holding all our software installs. And because we're going to use running VMs on this box, this is our uh, our drive image um, folders that we hold. So it's quite straightforward um, what we've done. So quite nice and easy. So we've got, this is how I configured mine. I've created archive, archive in data, that's on my RAID volume. I've got my iOS images, so when you're doing VM installs, you want them to be running from the SSD drives because they run really fast. So that's pointed to the SSD drive only. The software directly app, with all my apps in there are pointed to the RAID volume again. And obviously we don't need to worry about the system because that's part of the system itself anyway. Um, if you can actually, when you create a share, like we had a share here, you can specify say new cache disk. The only trouble is if you fill your cache disks up, before it it does like a, a move command, uh, it will show disk space um, low or disk space out. Um, so if you're writing data, not very often, and doesn't it's not important data to write at the time, I would leave this on no. Um, so it writes it directly to the, the actual RAID drive. Most RAID systems are pretty fast these days, especially if you've got a number of network cards and a good network switch in place, then it's it's easy to write to the RAID um, the device directly with itself. You've got a move command here as well, which you can actually um, say move now. So anything temporary stored on the SSD drives will then move to the RAID. That's how basic works. So if you did want to use this as your shared volume, as you save data throughout the day, it saves on the SSD drive. And I think it was it's set at the moment to run a move command once every 24 hours. So when you when you go home in the evening, late at night, it's issues the move command, it moves that data onto this drive here. But from your point of view, you get a drive mapping and it always stays the same. You don't see this process happening in the background, but that's how it basically works. But I've turned my um, using the cache drives off so they write directly to the RAID disk itself because I've only, there's only a small amount of users on this network. So it's not really important to have the cache drives in place. So you've got a large volume of network users then it's worth configuring the move command to run a bit more frequently and maybe have a larger cache drives instead of the small 512 gigabytes. So that's the basic setting up and that's the basic getting it working. So on our next, on our next video we'll show you a bit more about running VMware, VMs 
and there's a lovely little thing on the docker that I'd like to show you later on as well we're going to do it, which is called we should go into it under it's called a template called sync which work is really really good and if you want to stream video um, so you want to create like a video streaming server we'll show you another video we how to use the Plex media server on the Unraid which is fantastic plugins and tools to use and we'll also show you a bit later on how to install a Windows 10 VM within Unraid so you can actually have it as a virtual desktop if you want to or how to install virtual a virtual server like 2016 where you want to run Microsoft Exchange or SQL Server from your Unraid box and so long as you've got lots of CPU and lots of RAM in your box you can run multiple VMs at the same time as well more of that in a, in a video coming up so thanks for watching guys stay tuned for the next one cheers